Hello friends and welcome back to my channel for part two of this custom McFarland Batmobile build. Now, before we get into it, a couple things I wanna say. To all the new subscribers, welcome. This is a positive place and I appreciate you being here. And you know, I've had a lot of people actually sending me pictures, videos that they've posted on YouTube of their Batmobile. It was either inspired by mine or they saw that I was doing one and they wanted to share what they did. I welcome that all day long. I love trading information, trading supply ideas and stuff like that with people who are actually trying to do this themselves, not armchair quarterbacks. I'm making this car how I wanna make it. I'm doing this using the materials that I think are appropriate, that as a professional artist, I have sourced over a long career and have figured out what works for me and what doesn't. And this is going on my shelf, right? There are a lot of differing opinions about this Batmobile, what it looked like, what materials went into it, etc. I don't really want to hear it. I have done the research on what I think this should look like, and that's what's happening. If you have a differing opinion of that, you are welcome to keep it to yourself. People going, you should have done this, should have done that. Oh, the car had the actually blah, blah, blah. Oh, this looks wrong, but that's getting deleted immediately. Like, do these people think I'm going to see their comment and go, oh my God. That dude 69 is right. Let me start over. No, most of the time when you see these videos, it's done. And I'm not gonna go back and work on it because some brando is like, oh, that's wrong, or I would have done this. Like, think about this before you type. You know what I mean? If you think that this should be done a different way, go make your own. Send me a link when it's done. If you've not ever done something like this, if you're not doing your own, you don't have any room to speak on this, so keep it to yourself. Now, I'm not just out for positive comments praising me. That's not what this is about. What this is about is me sharing my process with people who want to see it. If it's not for you, keep it pushing, period. It's that simple. Any comments that are negative get deleted. I don't even read it. At first glance, when I can tell what it is, it gets deleted, you get blocked. I wouldn't let somebody come into my home and talk trash about what I'm doing or give me, oh, you should have done this, should have done that. And so you don't get to do it here either. Now, if you get blocked, what that means is that you don't get to comment on these videos. You still get to watch them, which means I still get the ad revenue from you checking it out. So I invite you not to put that effort in because it's gonna go wasted. There are too many nice people who are having cool conversations with me, asking me questions, telling me about their Batmobile. That's who I'm engaging with. That's who the effort goes to. So just putting that out there so that everybody knows what it is. Shout out to Jim Goob, shout out to Felipe, shout out to Collect to Disconnect. You know, people like you are great to talk to. I appreciate the exchange. So again, big thanks to everyone who reaches out with positivity. I do my best to send that back to you in kind. And welcome to everybody else who's new to the channel. That's it. We're going to get right into it. Trying to get the body ready for paint. And you, you have probably noticed that I've had this rag out while I've been working on this. I use this when I need to turn the car upside down so I don't scratch it. So I recommend doing that for sure. Uh, I've taken out these side piping pieces. They didn't come out super easily. Uh, I drilled through the back and because of the, the shape of this thing, it was kind of hard to get a drill in there, but that's how I got the tail lights out and they just popped right out. It was super easy with the drill. So the other thing I did to prep this for paint is I masked off these little windows. Uh, these are windows on the car. So I want to keep them glossy, even though they're not clear plastic. Uh, the next step is going to be to take a microfiber cloth and put a little uh, rubbing alcohol on it and just wipe off all the fingerprints and stuff. I'm not worried about sanding it down or anything, uh, but you do want to get the oils off because those will impede the adhesion of the paint. So I got the wheels masked off. So the plan is to paint the wheels silver and I have a tint spray from Tamiya, which makes stuff for models and, and RC cars and stuff like that because through my research and talking to a couple of people who are very knowledgeable on the subject, the wheels on the original Batmobile in 89 were like a silver alloy and then they were spray tinted, uh, except for this silver bat in the middle. So that's what I am looking to recreate with this. All right, so I'm outside clear coating this thing and I left it for a bit to dry and a pretty major issue has arisen. Uh, you can see that it has reacted with the plastic and is turning a different color. And that color is suspiciously close to the color that the canopy was. So unfortunately, that means that I am going to have to paint this thing uh, black. I think it'll still look good, but I was really hoping, you know, like I love the way this turned out with just a clear coat. I was, I was pretty hyped on it because I felt like I was doing a good job, which can be really hard when you're using 
you know, any kind of spray paint uh, to feel like you're doing it evenly and, and well. Yeah, that's really unfortunate because this was working out well and then it just stopped working. So the only thing I'm excited about now is that the canopy will 100% match the rest of it. The canopy has been a challenge on its own, painting that thing, like trying to match it to the plastic as closely as I could meant that it ended up having a ton of different layers of paint. So now it's got too much paint on it. Anyway, a job like this isn't without its challenges. Now you can see in real time that you shouldn't do what I did. And for reference, I used this Krylon Color Master clear coat. So that is what reacted with the plastic to cause it to discolor this way. Fortunately, I don't think it's damaging the plastic. I think it's just reacting to the color. Uh, the integrity feels like it's still there, so. Hey friends, wanted to pop in real quick and just talk about some real stuff with you uh, regarding this project. So every big project like this that I do gets to a point where I just want to give up and stop doing it. <laughs> and I'm there right now with this car. And I thought that was important to share because a lot of people are trying to customize their Batmobile based off the series of videos. I have a lot of experience with different mediums and different paints and, you know, the patience of working on a project like this, the intricacies of it, etc. And a lot of people trying this because they just want a dope Batmobile don't have that behind them. So I think it's important to share that sometimes when you're working on something like this, you just want to give up. And it happens to probably all of us, if not most of us. And that's where I'm at with this thing right now. Now, obviously I'm going to finish. Uh, I'm still excited about this, but when I start to feel like this, it's always at the painting part. There's going to be a lot of sanding and a lot of repainting. And so you might experience that same thing with yours, you know? So anyway, I just wanted to pop that in and share that little bit because you are probably going to get to a point in yours where you're like, man, this sucks and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> you know, you're spending your weekend on it. Like I, I work 80 hours a week. I do this on the weekends. And so my whole weekend when I need to be doing yard work and training and playing with my dog and spending time with my wife and all that stuff and cleaning the house, all that can get put aside while I'm really focusing on working on a project like this and trying to finish the video. And so, you know, I just think it's important to share that like the frustrating realities of a project like this that can happen sometimes, so. Paint update, I pushed through, the sun came out, I got a second wind, I said, you know what? Let me sand all those runs down, all the issues that it had and repaint it. And I'm very happy that I did. I feel like I really got it where I wanted it to be this time. I used a Krylon Color Max, you know, Fusion something or other. It's supposed to be a flat black, but it did have a, a nice sheen to it. And then I sprayed it with a couple coats of a gloss coat just to give it that satiny finish. But yeah, all in all, one of the better paint experiences I've had once I pushed through the difficult parts. All right, getting ready to airbrush these side mechanics. And I wanted to show you, I used the Tamiya tint spray on it that I mentioned, and look how cool this looks. Like it really gives it a kind of heat treated look already, you know, a little bit of grease to it. So instead of just being like a flat silver color, it has a real nice sheen to it. It doesn't go on very thick. So you gotta do, I mean, this is probably at least three coats and it does tend to pool in some of the recesses, which is good, that's what I want. But it was definitely interesting to use for the first time. And this is the Tamiya tint spray. I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below for you. And then I started to paint the afterburner because I took some acrylic paint, took black, brown, and a little bit of a brick red, and I mixed them together. And then I just pulled the strokes like this in the same direction as these panels. You know, the, the sort of metallic look from the plastic is still kind of showing through. It's a nice compromise because you get a little bit of the metallic look, but then also this kind of like rust metal that's been burned a thousand times with the afterburner kind of look to it. And then actually something I just figured out what looks cool is if you take some water on your brush and just go over these tips like this, it gives them the same look as if you had dry brushed silver on it. It just helps to sell the look that it's metallic. And I've actually decided to do that same treatment like this in the cracks where these panels meet uh, because pulling up a bit of that paint there gives that dry brush effect and then what we'll do is add the black to the center and that is going to give it the look we want. All right, and there is the afterburner. That is the look I wanted. All right, currently working on getting the taillights in place. Now I did decide on something since I started this project. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to use and I opted to go for these little craft 
bead things, half round flat back like rhinestone thing that you, you know used to like bejewel things. <laughs> and I wanted to do something that was clear and red, but also, you know, I could stick a light bulb in. So I drilled little tiny holes into the back of these and I'm gluing a three millimeter LED bulb in there now. Now, a lot of people are gonna use marker lights for this. You know, you can get them on Amazon and various places. It's the kind of light that you would use in like your oven. You turn it on and then the light goes off to let you know that you've reached your temperature. The reason I didn't wanna do that is because those typically are like 120 volts and these are three volts. So that just gives you an idea of the sort of difference in you know, how bright something can get. Now these, these little LEDs are meant for cars and stuff like this. So they're not gonna get super bright, but they will be bright in scale with the vehicle itself. You know, cause you think about it, you don't want it to be like a, a headlight beam coming out of this thing. You want it to light up, but not be blinding. And so that's why I'm going with these lower voltage hobby lights. Now your mileage may vary on the lights. If you want them brighter, that's all good. That's your prerogative and I support you. But for mine, that's the decision that I made. All right, as I continue to work on the lighting here, I got some flickering orange LEDs for the afterburner. If I drill right inside of that half circle, then the little bulbs will stick right there. So I think that's gonna be the move. They're real tiny bulbs. I got them real small on purpose so that I could put them there. You know, it's probably not gonna be the brightest like burning fire, but it'll look cool when all the lights are on and it's sitting there. Cause you think about it, I'm putting this in a bat cave display, so there's no reason that the afterburner would be going crazy when it's just sitting there. All right, getting the wiring all dialed in here. This is gonna be a little tricky because I wanna put the battery housing right here in the cockpit. So I'll hot glue that to this piece. I drilled a hole underneath the dash and I put the switch under here. So to turn it on when I open the canopy, I'm gonna reach under the passenger side and that's gonna turn the light on. As you can see from the underside of this, this round piece here is the circular part of that panel that would pop out and the, and the guns would come out from under it. And I was cutting through them. You can actually kind of see right here where I was cutting through. And actually here's some of the line here where I cut on the underside as well. But the problem was twofold. So the round piece is actually a separate piece that tabs in and out, right? So that's not that much of an issue, but the problem is that the housing piece for it runs into where I would need to cut. So that complicates the cut so that I can't just like flip it over as cleanly the way I wanted to just rotate it and have the guns be on the other side. And then the other problem is that the support piece for the cockpit and also part of the track where the, the canopy runs along, it's right where I need to cut. So there's really just no cutting through this piece. It just wasn't feasible. So you can see that I've glued a couple of magnets on either side. And then, so basically the plan is just gonna to be to attach the weapons to the top via magnet. What I've done here is I've taken this styrene straw and then I took my little cylinder shaped file and I just poked holes in there and give it a little twist. And then I took the file and stuck it down the end of the barrel and did some back and forth with it. And that's gonna get out all the little perforation bits that I pushed into the center. So that's gonna go in there like that. All right, let's take a look at how the weaponry is coming along. So cut this little piece of balsa wood. I put a magnet inside of it to attach it to the car. Clad this with more styrene. And then I sanded it down so that it would be even edges. I drilled a hole in the front of it and inserted this piece along with a, a bit of a, just like a little sleeve piece from the larger straw. I cut piece of the straw in half, add these little end pieces to it. This makes kind of the housing for the ammunition. This isn't gonna be a, an exact replica of the weapons on the vehicle itself, but it, you know, I'm doing a little approximation of it. I cut a hole here. That is where the ammunition is gonna feed through. There should be like a slide piece right here, but you know, again, I'm making a miniature version by hand. So I'm not gonna sweat all the details too much, but I just want to to look like a generalized version of this thing. So, and then I just added some little trim pieces in various spots to kind of build it up, give it some texture and character. Then this is gonna get painted flat black and then I'm gonna dry brush it with silver. Very happy with how this turned out. You know, I've, I'm have i making this up as I go and it's been working. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, here are the guns all finished up. I sprayed them with some of that Tamiya tint spray because I wanted them to have a bit of a gloss to them and just help sell the kind of metallic sheen. 
that the straight up just silver paint doesn't get. Uh, last step is gonna be, I'm gonna add some felt to the bottom of this, same thing I used on the interior. This is just so that the paint doesn't rub off. Uh, I just want it to have a nice smooth surface to interact with so it doesn't scratch anything. And then I have these bullet jackets. These are from, uh, I think as a NECA Rambo. I'm gonna cut these to size and just glue them right in there like that. Here is the finished car, and I almost don't know how to talk about this thing. It, I've spent so much time on it, and I'm really just so happy with how it turned out. It's so cool to have a vision on how you want to do something, you know, really put the time and effort in and have it come out very, very close to how you wanted it. You know, working lights, the chopped canopy. I tinted the windows, as you can see, that took about two hours. It was like an hour per window. So that was very, very difficult, but I think it makes all the difference to the way this thing looks. And I'm just really happy with how this turned out. It was really worth all the effort and the difficulty of getting one of these things and, and you know, the, uh, the time it took to finish it. Let's take a look at it with the cockpit open here. As you can see, the dash lights up now. It is now a two-seater. And yeah, I left the old headrest in there because to me it looks kind of like a vent in the back of this thing. And you figure, you know, he's all up in that dark, hot costume and running around fighting crime. He could use the extra airflow. So I thought that was a nice detail to leave in, actually. <laughs> so let's get this thing onto the workbench and punch in and take a closer look at the details. First, I want to show you the afterburner light. I'm really happy with this. You know, it's very subtle. Let me turn the lights down here. I love the, the light flicker of it. You know, if you can't see the bulbs, it does have just this kind of nice orange flickering glow. So it looks like there's a flame in there that's just ready to roar. Uh, the lights, well, like I said, I didn't want these to be like super bright beams. I want them to have a, you know, a natural look to them and something that scales well with this. So these are reading a bit green on camera, but they are, very yellowy orange uh, in person. So we've got our gas caps. I added these little step pads here. So while they were filming, Kim Basinger's heels kept scratching the very expensive flip-flop paint that they did. And so they had to add these little step pads for them to step onto to get in and out of the car. And so these are just sandpaper that I cut to size and they make the perfect little step pads. Taking a look at the wheels, I, I wish I had done them a shade or two lighter I think they're accurate like this, but a shade or two lighter would have been my personal preference just because I did these outside and so I forgot to account for the light change inside. So when they're under, you know, strong direct light, they look really good. When they don't have as much direct light, they are a little darker than I wanted them to be. But again, you know, in the film, they actually look black on screen unless you look real close. So just would have been my personal aesthetic preference to have them a little bit more silvery. Uh, let's take a look at the mechanics and the piping stuff so you can see I've got the the blue greens in there and then the afterburner that nice detailing the tailpipes also have that spray tint and then a little bit of blue color to them and then to operate the lights you just reach under the dash two clicks and they're off and I'm just so pleased that I was able to make this thing a two-seater I'm not gonna put Batman in it because the Mezco Batman, beautiful as it is, does have some QC issues with the hips specifically. 
and I do not want to try to force mine forward to fit him in there only to find out that uh, I've broken him. So uh, Batman is staying outside the car. Now I did actually source some better seats for this. The seller just took forever to ship them. They are finally on their way, but I didn't want to wait. I wanted to get this video out. Now the turbine up front, I did have to repaint because I gouged the hell out of it right here as I was trying to pop it out. So I had to sand it down and then repaint it. But I'm So here are the finished weapons and these just stick on right in their spot like that. Now I did make them mirror images of each other, how they're supposed to be. Uh, and the ammunition flows up from the interior outward and really pleased with how these turned out. As I mentioned before, I was just kind of making this up as I went going off with some pictures and I added a little bonus feature to them. So I've got these Mezco bullet effects that I don't use in my display. So I made it, you can just plug those right in and it gives it a little bit of a, you know, like there's kind of some arcing motion to the, the firing. Oh, I thought that was pretty cool. So, you know, given that these wheels don't turn, I can add a little bit of motion to it with this. It's these fun little details that I love. So I definitely wanted to have something like that in this. And they do pivot, you know, because they're on a magnet, you can just pivot them however you want and they'll just stay in place, so. I thought it would be fun to see the two of these next to each other. So let's take a look at the difference. Now you can see here, you know, that, I mean, from the lights, the overall paint job, you know, the, the side piping here, obviously the canopy. I mean, that's kind of the big one. The wheels. Now, obviously I don't have the wings on this one because I'm still storing it in the box until I have time to customize it, but I know these taillights are not accurate. I would have loved to have some cylindrical ones like these, but yeah, I, I wanted something that was gonna be pretty easy and I didn't wanna have to do any molding and casting because I can't stand doing that stuff. <laughs> It's messy and it takes too long and I just don't want to mess with it. I think these are a good compromise and I might keep an eye out for something to replace them with at some point, but I mean, just night and day. I'm so stoked on this. And let's pop them open here. Obviously a one seater, just black and silver. And then we've got our two seater. Lots of color, corrected steering wheel, painted gauge clusters, the light up in the center. When I do my other one, I may actually scratch build the, the screen accurate dash. I think that would be pretty fun. That might happen down the line, but for now, very, very happy with what's in here. Oh, and just a quick shout out to everyone who thought I didn't have a Dremel because I didn't use it on the canopy. <laughs> Here it is. I have one. I've had it for years. Um, I have a whole attachment set down there. Uh, it just wasn't the tool for this particular project. The reason I didn't use this is because the button is way back here. So even if you hold it like this and kind of switch it on and off like that somehow, you don't get the control of using like a, a trigger like on a drill. And then the other thing is that these can take a real bad hop. So as you're sanding or, you know, cutting or whatever, it can catch the material that you're cutting into and just and you know, go hopping like that. And then you end up scratching something else entirely and gouging something. I didn't want to deal with that. So that is why I did it the way I did. All right, friends, that is going to conclude this Batmobile build series. I want to sincerely thank you all for supporting the channel. It's taken a huge leap with this project and I really, really appreciate it. Also, before I forget, a quick note about the canopy. A lot of people have been asking me, can you possibly make a mold of that? Can you copy it somehow so we can buy it, etc.? I don't think I can. <laughs> um, making like a silicone mold out of something like this would be next to impossible. It's so thin and like it's a, you know, a dish shape and then it's got the track pieces. And so, you know, you'd have air bubbles and like it just, it wouldn't work. I've looked into having molds made of stuff before and it is costing the thousands of dollars. I think heat forming and you know vacuum forming would be possible. The issue with that is that I would have to build a vacuum form machine, which isn't the hardest thing in the world, but it does take time. You know, there's the process of molding the plastic over it, potentially damaging 
the canopy that I've already spent hours and hours on. And then each one would take a really long time to do because you'd have to form it. And if you mess up, you gotta start over, you gotta trim it, you gotta buy supplies. On top of that, I work a ton, as I mentioned before. So it just doesn't really make sense for me to do something like that that wouldn't pay me the amount that I would need to like step away from my actual job. Uh, I'd basically be taking a pay cut for a headache and it just doesn't make sense. So, so I just wanted to put that in there because a lot of people have been asking me and that is the definitive answer that I've come to. So next up on the channel is gonna be a diorama of the 89 Batcave with the vault for the suit and you know a place for the Batmobile to go and that's where it's gonna live on my shelf. So, so if you haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to come along for the ride. If you're watching this, you, you probably like comic books and comic book characters. I happen to be a comic book artist and writer full-time. I've done work for Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, Boom. I currently have a contract with Humanoids where I'm putting out standalone graphic novels. One of which is Count. It's my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. So, you know, if you like stories like Batman where a, a guy is wronged and dedicates his whole life to training and revenge, that is the book for you. I'm gonna put a trailer for it at the end of this video. I'd love for you to stick around and check it out. And if it looks appealing to you, there is a link in the description below of where you can get it on sale at Amazon. It's also available at your local comic book shop and bookstore. So that is gonna do it for this week. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.